So the Yukabaja traditional owners have a data sharing agreement with me um, and we, we both benefit from this project. The relationship that the plants um, at different times of years and the weather patterns and the actual different species that there are, um, how they all uh, influence and, and um, tell the traditional owners you know, when to hunt or when they might be around or those sorts of things. So one of the outputs of the project is actually building a seasonal calendar that describes all of those events and those, those relationships and have them in a form that, that you know, they don't usually actually have it in. They, it's very much an oral knowledge that you collect by experiencing and by doing. And so we're actually turning it into a printed calendar um, and so that we can share with, you know, well they can share with the wider community, the junior rangers, and certainly share with our kids in schools and things like that and their own kids. I have a shark and ray project we've been doing for the last year, year and, year and a bit. Eh? And since Karen been coming up, we've been doing bits, bits and pieces on like the seasonal, when, we, when it's right to get it and stuff. Yeah, we um, went down to Archer Point, down on the um, flats. A couple of the boys went out with spear, trying to get a couple of stingray. We got one, brought it back. Oh, well, you can just see the different perspective of how we live, you know, and just education. That's the most important thing is how the Indigenous race live, how we are one with the land and how we understand the land. So yeah, hopefully everyone's learning in this process. One of the problems we have as scientists is you can only be in one location for a very short amount of time and you don't get to build up that in-depth knowledge of how the system works and what animals come and go and how the seasons work. When someone lives on country for tens, thousands of years, that knowledge that is built up about how the natural system works can be really, really invaluable. Um, and it puts context, real world context, to the scientific information that we can get. traditional owners about different seasons or times of the year or if you're talking about what I found in this project is we're talking about particularly stingrays is that um, there are signs or these indicators that actually tell people you know what's going on you know if it's a good time for fishing or if it's a good time for hunting or if it's a good time for, you know that water's flowing fast or slow and those sorts of things and they have this uh, this whole memory bank of of indicators and and interconnections that that happened around them you know within their environment and those are the things that we're actually collecting and mapping from not only the old people but the young people as well who are out fishing and hunting and and collecting and doing those sorts of things we um we grew up hunting Stingrays when we were small, and the owls teach us how to make them, and cook them. Uh, when those those little flowers, they are wattle. When they start flowering out, that's when we know they get fat and just right to eat. Yeah, yeah, good time for hunting. Yeah. Um, the wattle is like um, it tells us when um, when stuff like stingrays or sharks or black brim or grunters or any kind of fish that they'll tell us that it's when it's fat or that's right, good for hunting. Um, yeah, when it start flowering like like that. So when it's really fluffy? Yeah, when it's really fluffy. Then it's telling you good time. Yeah, good time. Good time for fishing. Yeah. Excellent, all right. And so if you, you might be walking or driving along and you see the, the wattle flower, that's an, like an indicator. Yeah, 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 indicator, yeah. project is doing me good. Yeah? Yeah. How's it doing you good? What do you, what are you getting out of it? Uh, learn about the other stingrays that we don't eat and um, what, what other stingrays and sharks out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think this shark program need to be keep going so we can learn more about sharks and ray. Yeah. Two of us Aborigines, yeah. yeah. We live off that ever since for a real, yeah, long time, yeah. Just good knowledge out of it, really, like, what's here and how can we help the animals to, like,
populate and yeah see, see how see how I can live live properly off it. Yeah. Yukabaja have just an amazing breadth of knowledge about you know the Annan River, about their national park, about their traditional lands and their sea country, and that all comes into play in, you know in a very important way for for research projects. And I'm actually comparing it back to what Western science has documented in this in this area. We are finding um, that there are there is actually very little documented in the scientific realm, the Western science realm and the sort of like the breadth of knowledge that is contained in the indigenous knowledge system is actually huge. But it's a matter of, you know, understanding the context and being respectful about that knowledge and using it or documenting in a proper way. It's a pretty good spot here. Yeah, love, I love, on, love my country and enjoy stuff like some courses come up. It's good for us so we can keep up with it, ask stuff. Well, how my grandfather and my uncle showed me. So when they can't do anything, so we gotta go out and hunt. Then we take our little brothers or uh, some of our sisters there if they wanna come and we show them how to cook it, or like do a spearing, get it, or fishing. Yeah. Then we just show them how to cook it, cut it, and open them up and take the liver. If the liver is, uh, how we tell if it's good, the liver got to be like white, but a bit, bit pinkish on it, yeah. They've always had the knowledge, but if it can be interpreted into the scientific language, which is the currency and the way management works, that enables them to use the knowledge that they have in a more effective way when they're talking about how to manage their country with people who aren't traditional owners, with government and other stakeholders. Now it's good for the scientists to come on, onto, onto our land to, um, so they can see what we're doing and how we're looking after it and they can give us some knowledge and stuff too, how to pass back and forth to each other. So everything has sort of like its own effects on the river system and the more animals you can find out about, you can find out if the river's healthy, if it's unhealthy, and then plus it's a food supply. And that's the, one of the main things we want to know is if what people are eating is healthy for them or if it could be bad for them. Yeah, and the more programs that can combine and actually understand each other, it's all for the benefit of the country in the end. Mm -hmm.